Good morning, um, Facebook friends and family. Welcome to the broadcast of the Faith Formation Training and Development Center. I greet you with Jesus joy. This is Apostle LaRonda Bradley, your Kingdom Faith Ambassador. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to give it a few moments to allow people to come in. <laughs> I hope you're having a blessed and prosperous day on today. When you come in, I would like you to just indicate that you're here, put your name and where you're streaming from during the live broadcast. Thank you so much. I'm excited about the teaching on today. Um, been led by the Spirit of God to teach on being led by the Spirit of God, leading out of our very being, being governed by the Holy Spirit and practicing some spiritual disciplines we're gonna talk about on today. So I'm excited about that. I um, guess I'm gonna go on and, and begin the, the teaching and people can come in as I go forth. Um, we're gonna be referencing um, about four scriptures today. We're going to look at um, Romans 8, let me go down here on my computer one moment. We're going to reference Romans 8, uh, Romans 12, one, verses 1 and 2, um, 1 Peter 4 and 7, and 2 Timothy 3 and 16. Hey, Evangelist Carolyn, how are you, woman of God? <laughs> are you at work? Or are you on your break? <laughs> Um, I could invite you into the streaming if you want to chime in. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> hey, beautiful. Um, I am uh, was sharing the scriptures that I'm going to reference. If you can type them for me, that would be great. We're going to um, reference Romans 8, Carolyn, and we're going to re um, reference Romans 12, 1 and 2, verse 1 and 2, um, 2 Peter um, chapter 1, verse 4, and Finally, 2 Timothy 3 and 16. Hey, Marcetta, how are you? God bless you. Good to um, see you. <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> A friend from California. <laughs> I haven't seen you in quite some time. I appreciate everyone that has joined the broadcast. Um, I'm so excited about the teaching, and I'm going to just jump right in. And we're talking about um, leading out of our being today. Hey, Karen. Hey, how God, God bless you. I haven't talked to you in so long. One of my colleagues from college. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Okay, um, Evangelist Carolyn. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to be talking about, again, leading out of our being. And um, we're talking about the law of being, the law of the spirit of life. Amen. Glory to God. When we're um, moving in this place, when we're being led by the Spirit of God, the Word of God promises that you will experience some positive emotions, um, the emotions of, of having life and peace. Now, when you have life, um, the Word of God um, talks about Zoe life, of having like a vibrant life, uh, a life of abundance and more than enough. And so when um, the Faith Formation Training and Development um, Institute is designed to provide spiritual growth and development, to provide teaching strategies to assist um, people that are moving in a place of spiritual maturation that would like to go to another level in the Lord and are, are seeking deeper experiences with the Lord and want to you know, integrate all the parts of themselves and to begin to feel fulfilled within yourself as you begin to, again, have this integration within yourself that you're no longer feeling double-minded, but you can walk in a singleness of purpose and destiny. Wood has um, caused a lot of pain and suffering um, for individuals is this um, walking in this place of condemnation. Now, the Word of God instructs us clearly in Romans 8 that if we're in, in our flesh, we're going to feel the feelings of guilt and you're going to feel the feelings of shame. So this is why we need to focus on the directive here of walking in the Spirit 
And so when you find yourself having a moment of feeling guilt and shame, you as you train yourself and um, begin to develop in this place of maturation, you recognize right away when you're in this state and you can jump right out of that state into the, the spiritual state. Um, and, and this is what I do as a soul prosperity coach. I coach you and help you to understand um, um, that there's um, sins that wage war against your soul. Your soul is your heart, mind, will, and your emotions. And so um, as you develop mastery, you're going to begin to experience um, extreme um, levels of success. And it'll seem like an overnight experience as you begin to um, integrate some of these principles and concepts that I'm going to go over on today. Now, when we look at the law of our being or the law of the spirit um, in Christ Jesus, you begin to live in a way that is governed by the Holy Spirit. And so when um, when something when you're when you're being governed, the word govern means to exercise continuous sovereign authority over when you su submit to the, the sovereignty of God. He is a God who. Um, he, he's, he, we submit to, to the sovereignty of God and he's calling for loyal, loyalty and obedient service. And so Jesus Christ, when he was in his earthly ministry, he said that he was going back to the father and that he wasn't going to leave us comfortless, that he would send the comforter. Now the Holy Spirit is the comforter and the sovereign authority that is, is ruling and reigning as we begin to just submit to the Holy Spirit and be governed by the Holy Spirit. So when you allow yourself to be governed by the Holy Spirit, that means that he's controlling the speed of your destiny and purpose with your cooperation. Now, we can do one or two things. We can either submit to the Lord, we can submit to the Lordship, we can submit to the Holy Spirit, or you can resist the Holy Spirit, but you can't do both. You're going to either... Um, you know, uh, have complete reliance on the Lord, or you're going to completely defy him. Okay. So, um, when you're governed by the Holy spirit, that means that you're, you're using your will. You have, you're a free will agent and you're submitting your will unto the will of God. And this is, you're allowing him to direct and strongly influence your actions and your conduct. You're allowing the Holy spirit to be your guiding influence. You're allowing the Holy Spirit to hold you in check and to restrain you in certain um, aspects. So it's like when you um, have the Holy Spirit resting upon you, we have what we call hupomone. That means that he's sitting on you, helping you, giving you enabling power to discipline yourself in areas where you feel weak. In your weakness, his strength is made perfect, um, perfect in this endeavor. So when you are governed by the Holy Spirit, you're deciding that you're, you're moving by the principles of uh, that's governing the spiritual life, that the Lord is keeping you in a straight course of action, and you're operating from the operation of God, and it's going to work out for your good, not only for you individually, but for your family and your community. So as you're leading out of your very being and you're moving in the law of the spirit in Christ Jesus, you're going to be living in a way, the ways of the spirit. Again, this is being governed by the Holy Spirit, and this is um, transitioning you into a higher mindset. You're no longer going to be operating on your lower nature, but in your higher self, your higher nature. So when you set your mind on the things of the Spirit of God, you're going to experience peace. And you're going to have this tranquil um, experience in your life. Now, we're going to look at, we're going to compare and contrast when we're walking in the spirit and when we're walking in the flesh. And we're going to provide tools and strategies for you on today so that you can be equipped and you can begin to equip other people. Now, the mind of the flesh, um, according to Romans 8 and 1, is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. So this means that when you can um, you can you can grieve the Holy Spirit by res by resisting the Holy Spirit and not cooperating with the Holy Spirit, and then you're going to be operating out of your own 
spirit or if you or or you're going to be actually operating out of your carnality out of your carnal nature your carnal nature is your natural way of doing things in your human nature in your five sensual realm you're you're acting totally on intellect alone you're not being governed by the holy spirit you're actually being your own governor you're being your own god and God said he's a jealous God and he doesn't want you to put any God before him. So we have to renounce the God of self and the God of intellect, the part of us that leans on our own understanding and is always trying to analyze some things. They have a saying about you can develop analysis paralysis so you can begin to um, thwart the purposes of God or miss your Kairos moment if you stay in this analytical state to the place where you're smarter than God, where you know so much that you know so little, you know what I mean, where, where you begin to, you know, um, you have to rely on the wisdom of God. God's wisdom is greater than our wisdom. His ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Um, so when you when you allow the Holy Spirit to govern your life and you're not moving in this place of my, uh, walking in the mind of the flesh, because remember again, the mind of the flesh is, the, is your sense and your reasoning uh, fal faculties without um, the govern governance of the Holy Spirit. That means that you're not governed by the Holy Spirit and you have no self-governance and you have no self-restraints. That means you're operating in a compulsive way or impulsive way or just um, by your emotions alone. That you're not um, taking dominion over your mind and you're not taking dominion over your emotions at that time. You're just allowing them to move you. They're actually taking authority over you instead of you taking authority over them. When you're in this place of condemnation again, you're in the mind of the flesh and you feel this guilt and this shame and then this um, causes you to feel misery. You know, you feel miserable, you'll feel irritable, restless and discontent, right? So this is um, when we, this is an indicator when we feel the emotions of uh, restlessness and discontent. This is an indicator that we're in our carnal nature, that we're in our fleshly man. And so when, when you recognize it, when you're cognizant of it, you can jump back in and get back into the spirit and recognize what you're doing. And so that you, um, the purpose of the teaching is to help you gain mastery over your mental faculties and gain mastery over your emotional nature so that you can begin to experience the fullness of the Lord and the fullness of his spirit without measure so the mind of, of of the spirit again is life and peace it gives you soul peace remember the soul is the heart mind will and emotions and the heart is sick oftentimes because the hope has been deferred so you have to be a prisoner of hope on a daily basis and grab a hold of hope because faith and hope and love need to work all together your faith works by love if you're resting in God's love and know that he loves you and that his thoughts are good towards you thoughts of peace and not of evil that he wants to give you a hope and a future so every day you have to grab a hold of this hope that Christ is in you the hope of glory that you know that the father was dwelling in you doing the work and so the mind of the flesh are your carnal thoughts and and um and the purpose of this part of us um, is to, well, I don't know if I want to say it that way, but the, the carnal thoughts and the, um, when you're in your carnal thoughts, you're, you're actually um, hostile toward God. You are actually have enmity toward God. That means extreme hatred towards God. Remember, the flesh opposes the spirit. So when you're in your flesh, you oppose anything that is spiritual. You oppose anything that would demonstrate life and peace. You're actually um, focus on death because the mind of the flesh is going to the, having a proclivity to go to things that lead to death. Okay, and so this part, the, the mind of the flesh caters to the appetites and the impulses. Again, this is the carnal nature. And this part of, of the soul cannot please or satisfy God or be accepted by God. 
um, because the Lord says those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you're in your flesh, you're not in your spirit. You're only in your the five um, sensual realm. Our soulish realm is is um, helping us to navigate in the earthly realm. But you have to understand the different dimensions of who you are. You are a spiritual being um, with a soul living in a body. So God is call, calling you to begin to allow your spirit man to rise above your soulish realm so that you can experience victory. Because as an ambassador of Christ Jesus, God is giving you authority in the earth. He's giving you the ability to be a, a visible representation of the invisible king. Now we have a prophet, priest, and king. He is Jesus Christ. He is the high priest over the confession of our faith so that when we begin to walk in this place as sons and daughters, the Lord says that those that walk in, in the spirit are sons and daughters of God. And so, um, Again, when you're in the, the mind of the flesh, you're walking in this place of condemnation. You're walking as, in this place of shame, and you're actually operating in pride because you're not, um, you're, you're leaning on um, what, you're, what you think. You're, you're focused on, on all the wrongs that you've done, on your imperfections. And, and, and what you have to do when you move in the spirit, you recognize that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and that you're in right standing. When you really are walking in the spirit, you don't feel the condemnation or the guilt or the shame because you've appropriated the love and the forgiveness of God and you're standing on the word of God and you're receiving it and you're not rejecting or despising the word of the Lord. The Lord says that your sins and your iniquity I remember no more. And so when you're governed by the Holy Spirit, you're walking in this place of submission. When you're submitted to God, you're allowing him to direct and control you in a, in a positive way, not in a way that brings grief and, and is, is not in a way of grudgery. It's a pleasure to, to please him. Now, the natural body is dead by reason of sin and guilt. When you are come, when you come to Christ Jesus, but again, the Spirit of God in you is made alive through the righteousness of God that He imputes to you. So it, God doesn't exchange when you um, um, you relinqu relinquish your control. You give Him all of your wrong, and and He give you all of His right, and that's where you are in right standing with Him. The purpose of the teaching today is so that we can be prepared to receive our inheritance. He made us fit to receive our inheritance in the Lord. He equipped us. He qualified us. You don't qualify yourself. Now, the reason for the law was so that we can be aware of our sin nature, and, um, and, and it gives you the sin consciousness. But the Lord Jesus came to bring liberation from being in that con condemnation state. Now, when you receive Christ Jesus, you receive liberty, and you no longer walk in this place of sin consciousness, but you have righteousness consciousness, and it puts you in a place where you can walk in confidence and boldness. Now, you can receive God esteem. You allow the Lord to esteem you from the inside, and you have God sufficiency. You're not relying on your own strength or your own might. You're being strengthened by the Lord. You're strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You have you strong and of good courage because you know that he's with you. You know that he's in you and that he's conferring a greater glory on, on in, in, in and through you. And so the spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead is, is bringing about a restoration to your life in this next season. But the Lord is calling us to greater spiritual disciplines in this season so that we can receive what is rightfully due us. Amen. Glory to God. It says for all who are led by the spirit, again, are sons and daughters of God. So remember that the flesh is your carnal nature and it puts you in, in bondage to fear. So those are four, three or three or four things that I mentioned before when these are indicators when you are in your flesh, when you're in, in the mind of the flesh, when you're in your carnal nature, you're going to feel guilt, you're going to feel condemnation, you're going to feel shame, and you're going to feel the, the tormenting thoughts of fear, the fearful thoughts. Fear involves torment, is not of God, is of the devil. So he wants you to stay in this carnal state. So we're um, destroyed 
destroyed because of lack of knowledge. So we want to have knowledge. And so we understand the wiles of the enemy. He he wants you to stay in this, this condemnation state, in this carnal state, because he doesn't want you to receive what right, rightly belongs to you. Remember that Christ said that um, curse is the man who hangeth on a tree. And he became a curse for you that you could receive the blessing. So you don't have to um, walk in any kind of um, curse. You are totally blessed. And the Lord, when he blesses you, he sanctifies you. Jesus Christ said he sanctified himself that you could be sanctified in him. And he says when he sanctified you, you receive that. And you don't no longer call, um, he says, don't call unclean what I've called clean. So you have to speak positive affirmations over yourself and speak in divine alignment what God says about your life. And the Lord had been impressing upon me about guarding the, the, the gates to our mouth. Now we have all these gates to our soul that we have to be good managers and we have to develop mastery over our mental condition, over our emotional condition, and over, um, over our whole life that we have to begin to move in this place of taking responsibility for the bad decisions that we've made because we're not victims, we're victorious, we're overcomers. And as we begin to take responsibility and admit the areas that we need to come up higher in, the Holy Ghost works with you. See, the Lord said that the work he began, he will complete in, to, in you into the day of Jesus Christ. He still has us on a part of will. We're marred in his hand. He's making us again a new afresh and he's using the weak things to confound the wise he, he's consigned so many of us to uh, one level of disobedience so that we can experience grace and mercy everyone have walked in disobe disobedience at one point and have learned and and, are, and we are learning obedience by the things that we suffer i don't care how big you are in the body of christ everyone has to go through that same process we go through a process of being purged and purified and 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 him taking out the rebellious nature, the defiant nature, the old um, fallen state, the old Adam state. The old Adam state is defiant toward God, is rebellious, is not submitted to God. It's, it's focused on only on the appetites. It's only focused on everything in the natural. It's enmity towards God. It has an extreme hatred towards God and the things of God. It's the fleshly mind that will not allow you to get up and pray. It's the fleshly mind that will not allow you to fast and, and do your meditation practices um, that that will get you the results that you're looking for. Because remember, the mind of the flesh is enmity towards God. Amen. Glory to God. So the spirit of adoption is the spirit um, producing sonship. So when we begin to walk in the spirit, your spirit, the spirit himself, um, um, together with our spirit will assure us that we are children of God. So you will be quickening your spirit to know that you are a child of God and you begin to cry out, Abba, Father. In 2 Peter 1 and 4, it says, whereby we are given, are we, are ye given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises. The promises of the Lord are precious. He said um, that that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. So the Lord here is um, assisting us here so we can begin to allow the Christ in us to arise. My, my job as a soul prosperity coach is to, um, to, to um, coach you to the place of to Christ be formed in you, that I help you with your faith formation and activating your faith and helping you grow and develop your faith mo muscles. Because when you receive the Lord, you received a measure of faith. So we all have a measure of faith, but we have to develop that faith and it has to grow and we have to move from glory to glory and from faith to faith. And you can't move in that place if you don't feel just, if you don't know that you've been justified if you don't know that you've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb, that, that, that he, he became the propitiation for your sin, that he became sin and knew no sin, and that, that he was the innocent lamb slain before the foundation of the world, that he 
um, gave you this imputed righteousness that you are right with God, that you could begin to lead, lead out of your being and understand your beingness, that, that you're very good, that you're fearfully and wonderfully made the workman of his hands and that he's giving you dominion in the earth. He's giving you the ability to govern your life, being led by the spirit of God to begin to move in this place um, of purpose and destiny in him. So when you begin to be a partaker of this divine nature, that means that you've escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. And so no longer will you be led by your fleshly carnal nature, your lower nature, but you will move in your higher self. You will move towards higher things of God. And, um, um, uh, uh, and then the Lord talks about in first Peter, um, verse three of that um, chapter one, it says, according to his divine power, has he given us all things again pertaining to life and godliness that through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. So we're talking about today moving with um, this in this place of developing spiritual disciplines. Now, a, a, a discipline sometimes has a negative connotation if you think of it in, in reference to a punishment so that you won't receive that well. So if you have to make sure that when it comes to the things of the Lord, that you're not projecting your experiences that you had with natural parents to you, to your spiritual father. Lord, the um, Some of us have been raised in abusive households. We've been raised by... Um, uh, people that have abused us. And so you cannot uh, use that word towards the Lord in that same manner. You have to look at it in a positive connotation. So what we're looking at today when the Lord disciplines us is the word of God says he disciplines who he loves. And so discipline is instruction, is training that's going to bring about correction, is molding us, is perfecting us, is perfect is is perfecting the mental faculties and if we have a little time I'm going to share a little bit about that in a moment and it it helps us to develop our moral character and it enforces obedience remember that we're learning obedience by the things that we've suffered in this last season because we're in preparation for something great but we're going to have to do something different in, in this next season to get a different result so God is bringing us into divine order and divine alignment and so the discipline also uh, is is what we call orderly or prescribed con conduct or a pattern or of behavior and is developing self-control is a fruit of the spirit that we operate in amen is called temperance and so it also is a system um, or of rules governing our conduct or our activity and it is the purpose of it is to train us and to develop us by instruction and by us exercising self-control so the holy spirit is our teacher he is our counselor he is our helper he is our advisor he is our strengthener and he's he's coming alongside us to make sure that we receive our inheritance um, as we are moving as um, in a greater level of being disciples of the Lord, of being followers of Jesus Christ, a disciple is one who accepts and, ass and, and assists in spreading the doctrines of another. So when you're a true disciple of Jesus Christ, you're um, moving towards that place of of preaching the kingdom of God is at hand. So that's what Jesus Christ came to do to teach about the kingdom of God. So when you move in this place of of, of, of the kingdom of God, you develop a kingdom mindset. You don't no longer have the old mind, mindset or the old paradigm that used to govern your behavior. Now, the Lord Jesus talked about that we must be born again to even see the kingdom of God. So we have to make sure that we are, um, that we, our confession of our faith, that our heart and our mouth is in alignment, that we're speaking the correct things. 
Um, and that he said that you have to be born of the water and of the spirit, even in to enter into the kingdom of God. So it's, it's two different dimensions to see the kingdom of God and even to enter the kingdom of God. You must be born again. And not only that, but you must be born of the water and the spirit so that you must receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God. So some people are operating as carnal Christians and they're not um, they don't reflect the glory of God. They don't reflect Christ likeness. And so this is the goal of the training and development center to begin to help us with our spiritual maturation and our spiritual growth and our development. And so as followers of Christ Jesus, we have to remain teachable. So when we're when, I, when I'm coming here to coach and develop and train um, and to edify and build you up so that you can we can begin to grow in the unity of the faith. See, God um, connects like um, um, people with like faith together. He gives us a covenant. Um, a divine covenant is a reason why we're connected to to each other. We're part of each other's destiny and purpose of us, us fulfilling our kingdom dominion mandate. And so the Lord will reveal to you why we are connected and how that um, supports um, our growth and our development as individuals and even collectively. Now, the purpose here today of the teaching is for us to develop mastery. And, and to be masterful. And mastery is when we have this comprehensive knowledge or we begin to develop this skill um, so that we can accomplish our goals, right? When we have mastery, that means that we're developing proficiency, that we begin to, we have ability, we have capabilities, we, we are developing capacity, we're beginning to walk um, and commanding our life. When we're commanding our soul, we're commanding our mind, we're commanding our emotions, we're commanding our soul to praise and worship God when we're extremely tired, when we're fatigued, when we're, when our mind wants to focus on the, the things of our past, the failures, the, the mishaps and the things that we've done, the shortcomings, the character defects, all of the, the mistakes that we made, that condemnation and that guilt and that shame um, spiral that we go on, that's all operated in our pride. We have to receive um, his love and forgiveness on a daily basis. You got to begin to affirm, I love and I forgive myself. I love and I accept myself. In my natural state, I'm imperfect, but in Christ, I'm perfected. Christ is my perfection. He is my righteousness. I'm in right standing with God. I have the mind of God. I have the mind of Christ Jesus. I can do all things that Christ is strengthening me to do. I'm being led by the spirit of God. I'm not being led by my emotions. I'm my, my God is bigger than my situation and my circumstances. See, the fleshly mind keeps us focused on on, on, the, on the issues that we have. So it keeps us from moving in the things of God and keeps us in this place of doubt, of discouragement, of bewilderment, of confusion. And see, the Lord is not the author of, com author of confusion. His perfect love casted out all that fear. So we have to constantly discipline ourselves to train our mind and, 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 and regulate our mental faculties to pull down the strongholds on our mind by speaking and saying, and, and, and speaking what's in alignment with God's perfect will for our life, we have to begin to talk to our mind and, and be able to evaluate these thoughts to see if they're in alignment with the divine mind of God. A lot of our thoughts, if they're on the lower nature, then we would recognize it because the Lord gives us a list of things that we're to do to think on things above and not beneath things that are um, honest, good, uh, good report, and lovely all these um, um, positive connotations when we focus on those things. So if your thoughts are not on any things that are above, that means that it's a possibility that you're in your carnal, carnal mind and you need to um, discipline yourself to um, get into the word, first of all, for the word of God to purge that out. See, the word of God is a mirror to you. It's going to mirror to you whether or not your thoughts are in a divine alignment or not. And you can course correct at that moment. You can begin to be proactive in your life and you begin to, you know, take some steps of action to say, no, this is what the enemy did to me last season. This is the way that he caused me to walk in this self-defeated way. He caused me to 
um, walking in self-destructive way because I was making decisions based on my carnal nature. I was make, making decisions based on my emotional nature. I was making decisions from the place in me that was in pain, that was uh, my soul was inbound by the, the issues of my life because out of our heart, the issues of our life are flowing. You understand? So um, when the Lord is helping us move into this place of mastery, he's, he's having us again move into these spiritual d disciplines in our life in Christ Jesus. And that means that a lot of the activities that we do will be bodily activities because remember that you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you're living in a body. So you have to have corresponding action in your bodily activities that you have to consciously make a decision and you have to have this willingness to engage. You have to move into this place of um, uh, engaging in um, healing your whole soul. Now you remember that I said that either you're going to submit or you're going to resist. You're going to be either either willful or you're going to demonstrate willingness. You're going to you're a free will agent and you're going to either choose life or choose death. And 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 the carnal mind, the carnal nature is only going to go to death. Is not going to come to go to life. Remember that with, with the sacrifice of Christ Jesus annulled our covenant that we made with death. But we have to practice some disciplines. So when the Lord wants us to to move in this place of mastery, this means that you will excel in anything that you do. That in order to have success, to excel in anything in life, you have to dis discipline is required. Amen. Glory to God. So in order for us to have effective, to be effective disciples or to have effective disciplines, it's going to be delightful for us. It's not going to be a drudgery because remember that the word of God talked about when our earthly parents disciplined us, it brought about you know, pain. But when the Lord disciplined us, it brings about pleasure. Amen. He said, don't despise the chastening of the, of the Lord. So when we don't despise the chastening of the Lord, and when we don't despise the word of God, that means that we're pliable, that we're teachable. The Holy Spirit is able to train us and develop us because we're moving in this place where we're um, following the directives in 1 Timothy 4 and 7 and, and 2 Timothy 3 and 16. And if I have a few minutes, I'll go over those scriptures. I'm going to try to finish in about 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm not going to hold you too long. Thank the Lord. And so um, remember, training has difficult aspects of it, but but hard work will pay off. So that means that we have to finish. We have to focus on the finished works of Christ Jesus. We understand that we're suffering with Him, that we can glory with Him. He says, "So this light affliction is is um, working out for you a far far exceeding um, experience of glory." I'm just paraphrasing. I might not be quoting it exactly, but you know what I mean. Now, it's the purpose of us moving in these spiritual disciplines is to, to course correct, of course, and to give us a better attitude and disposition towards the things of God. We need, a, in this time, we need a vision because without vision, we're perishing, right? So the vision that uh, we need, the vision that um, Christ is before us, He's inviting us to an apprentice, apprenticeship, if you will, to apprentice ourselves to him and to learn how to live our lives in the kingdom of God, how to operate in the kingdom of God. And, and in this training and development, these spiritual disciplines that I'm inviting us to, um, um, to, to focus on strategically in this next season, to do some planning, to begin to you know, map out some things and, and write our goals and our and the different things that we want to achieve. And this is going to be accomplished by us, first of all, surrendering, getting honest with ourselves, um, with one another, with God and with one another, so that we can have koinia, we can have true fellowship, and that we begin to you know, take out some times for fasting and praying, not only abstinence from food and water and different things like that, but fasting from from um, our thoughts, fasting from certain ways that we're thinking to begin to 
um, purposely be mindful of the things that we're thinking to begin to do introspection through journaling to write out those things that have been um, easily besetting us so that we can be equipped and we can begin to strategize on how we're going to move in a different way in, in this next season. So when we're moving in these places of discipline in our mind or our mental faculties, that means that you're engaging your mind and your heart with God. That means that you're um, you're being you're meditating on the scriptures and you're 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 di you're disciplining yourself to speak positive affirmations over your life. This is a spiritual di discipline that we have to develop. You as you begin to take the word of God and you affirm it for yourself. Remember that the angels are hearkening to the voice of God. So as you beginning to practice this spiritual discipline of guarding the gate of your mouth and and using your mouth to only create. See, we have miscreated with the words that we have spoke. We have created a life that called, caused a lot of misery and pain that we didn't have to have because we didn't we weren't taught correctly. We had so much of the doctrine of man, and now the Lord is moving us to this place, going back to the law first mentioned. Um, before there were kings in the earth, God God was the king. He had us moving. The children of Israel were moving in a theocracy. God ruled. So the Lord is bringing us back to that place of being governed by the Holy Spirit, of allowing the Holy Spirit to govern your life. Amen. Glory to God. That means that you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You're you're practicing a spiritual discipline of 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 of, of reflection, of of being silent, of being still and knowing that he is God and resting in him when you're restless again and irritable and discontent you that's an indicator that you're in the mind of the flesh so when we're in the mind of the spirit we're going to feel that peace amen glory to God so God had lets us have our little moment our little spiritual temper tantrum but because we're walking as sons and daughters we're in a place of spiritual mat maturation so a lot of stuff that the Lord gave us grace of on that last um, this last um, quarter, if you will, he he's calling us to come up higher in this next season. So um, some of the things that we can practice is, as I'm trying to give some practicality and, and trying to bring this thing to a close in a few minutes, um, some things that you can practice is um, a spiritual discipline of abstinence. Now, that's self-denial of some things. So if the Lord is leading you to cut some things out, to like he's trying to amend our diets, I know that is an area that I haven't been disciplined in for my transparency. I've been, you know, how we have emotional binge eating moments and because of the emotional pain. Now, I've disciplined myself in some other areas, like I've been sober for 17 years, you know, so I don't think about drinking when I have problems, but I will go to food and I've disciplined myself in the sexual conduct, because uh, as you know, some of you guys know that I'm a recovering sex addict, <laughs> alcohol, drugs, addiction, all that. I was I was addicted to everything that felt good. So that is a spiritual discipline. You know what I mean? And so, in in when I have failed in those areas, you know, I discipline myself because those are sins that wage war against our soul. You know, when we do any sexual sins, we're actually sinning against our own soul. You know what I mean? So um, that's a whole different subject. I don't even know why I went there. But anyway, I'm just saying about abstinence is self-denial. So you might want to have self-denial um, of food. You might want to have self-denial of, of some people um, are still smoking cigarettes, whatever it is you're doing. You can do self-denials, and if you feel powerless over stopping a behavior and you don't feel like you have that, that um, um, self-control, you surrender that, and when you admit that you don't have the power to do it, God will give you the power. It will give you the ability to say no to what you usually say yes to, amen, because remember the sin nature uh, oftentimes indulges in things of that that that's why disciplines are are the way that you buffet your flesh and mortify the by the deeds of the flesh and you begin to as you do you know is a spiritual exercise to start developing this place of mastery over over your proclivities right 
And so when you move into this place of engagement, you begin to connect relationally with God and with others. Remember, as ministers of reconciliations, we're minister, we, we, we are reconciled in stages and phases. Now, we're first reconciled to God through Christ Jesus. Then we're reconciled to ourselves and then to our family and then to our community. So if there's no reconciliation with yourself, you have to get peace with God and peace with yourself because you can't love your neighbor if you really don't love yourself. So we have to go in this divine order. And this is going to be a, a new season of God showing us how to practice self-love, how to begin to nurture ourselves and how to balance our humanity and our divinity, how to balance the two. Now, the Lord gave us our, our, um, our soulless realm to enjoy the things in the earth realm, but he wants us to do things in moderation, moderation and things in balance. So the, what he's doing is helping us get ourselves in balance in divine order. Amen. Glory to God. So the Lord, what he is doing with these spiritual disciplines is he's giving you strength to endure the challenges. And that's what you will begin to develop as you practice the discipline of any kind of self-denial or abstinence, if you will. When you grow your reliance upon the spirit of God, you begin to develop this place of 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 extreme um, peace because you are you have this assurance that he's taking care of everything that he's working behind the scenes that he got your back that he's working everything out for your good and for his glory amen as you begin to do a spiritual retreat when you begin again to do this introspection through journaling when you begin to do this reflection process you're going to see a different experience you're going to see different results in this next season so the disciplines of abstinence again is self-denial god is calling us to deny ourselves of something we need or, or want in order to make space to focus on and to connect with God, to connect with ourselves and to connect with God and to connect with your purpose and destiny, to connect with the higher order of things. So as, if, as we're seeking the purpose and plan of God, he will give us a new vision. He will give us strategies and he will give us a download in our spirit of clarity of our kingdom assignment and our purpose and our destiny. We won't go around feeling confused and bewildered and, and feeling that lost feeling. The reason why we feel lost sometimes is because we're focused on the things in the natural and we're focusing on is something in the subconscious mind that's trying to figure out how I'm going to get myself out of this jam. And when the Lord, he's moving us in a supernatural. So this season is something that he's causing us to experience what um, 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 the place of where it's not going to be by our own might or by our own power, but it's going to be by the spirit of God. I know that we're going through some things that um, we have pressing matters before the Lord, but the Lord is doing some things expeditiously and he's doing some suddenlies and he's doing some turnarounds, but he's getting us back into this place of, of hunger and thirst for him, of, of seeking him and, and wanting to just be close to him, to commune with him, to sub with him. So another spiritual discipline that I will invite you to take take a part of is solitude. This is when you begin to detach with the spirit of love. You begin to refrain from interacting with others for a period of time. You have this alone, intimate time with the Lord. You can take spiritual walks. You can begin to just um, walk, be silent before the Lord. Again, practice silence, being still and knowing that he's God so that you can have this rest and tranquility as we're embarking on a, another level of fasting and prayer, of meditation. When you're meditating, you're uttering the word of God over and over again. You're putting God in remembrance of what he said. You're speaking in the affirmative. You're receiving the word of God as if it's already done, it's already finished. And um, you're moving into this place of a perpetual Sabbath rest. Remember, Christ Jesus is our rest. He's our rest. And as we move in this place of submission, we are this place of submission 
is not asserting ourselves in order to, so um, when we, we're not asserting ourselves in order to come under the authority and wisdom and power of Jesus Christ as our Lord, our King, and our ma and our, as, as our Master, we're renouncing the God of self, of self-sufficiency, of trying to do it in our own strength, of trying to figure things out. We're relinquishing control. We're letting go and letting God. We're resting in Him. We're standing on the promises of God. Amen. Glory to God. When you're submitted to a person as unto Christ is a discipline of engagement is remember that you're a free will agent. You're submitting yourself willingly. You're offering yourself to the Lord. You're, 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 you're giving yourself away. You're, you're, you're in view of his mercies. You're, you're giving your body as a living sacrifice. This is your spiritual worship to the Lord. Just like I'm volunteering my time right now to train and minister and coach you. This is something that I'm doing as unto the Lord. I'm doing this out of my love for the Lord just to say thank you, Lord, for all you bless me with. Amen. Sometimes we got to sow a seed into somebody else. We have to build somebody else. I'm here to build you up and edify you and strengthen you. Amen. To, to help you, you know, see that you're powerful. You're, 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 you're a mighty um, person of God. You're a person of great worth and value. The Lord, what he invested in you, he's going to see a return on that investment. He cares for you. He's a lover of your soul and a bishop of your soul and a shepherd of your soul and he cares about the condition of your soul at all times. Remember that he's giving you this measure of faith and he wants that faith to grow and he wants you to develop and he wants you to move in these higher levels of consciousness. In him he wants you to experience a deeper spiritual awakening and so the disciplines of engagement brings us um, um, it helps us to, to experience Christ in community. When we commune with the Lord first and have this abiding, um, uh, this feeling of abiding in him and he's abiding in us, then we can um, come and commune with one another. When we have this unity within, when our, within ourselves and we feel peace and we're no longer feeling guilt and shame, we can come and fellowship with one another. Something that bothers me so much is that when we come into our fellowships, we have a superficial way of greeting each other. We really don't know how one another is really doing. We don't really have an understanding of, of what are the intricacies that are going on with the person. When the, the scripture says, when no man cared for my soul, we have a friend that stick it closer than a brother. We have our advocate. We have our big brother, Christ Jesus, who is the door to God. He is the way, the truth, and the life that we're, we're, we're seeking to be more like him to Christ is formed in us. And so when we practice the disciplines of of reading our Bible, of really trusting the Holy Spirit to impart that word to us, to inspire us, that he begin to, that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened and that we begin to allow the, the word of God to be our wisdom, to be our guidance, to be our insight, to give us strength, to restore our hope on a daily basis. And so every time we, um, we know that we're not engaging in reading our scriptures or praying or, or, or seeking the Lord in these ways, we know that we're in our carnal nature. Now, the Lord, he likes quality time. It's not about how long you're doing it. It's about that you just you just love to be in his presence. Amen. Glory to God. Even when you're doing your regular, ordinary tasks, it, you could take 30 seconds just to give a sacrifice of praise. Glory to God. So in your worship, that's another spiritual discipline. This is a tool. This is a strategy because the enemy is after our worship. He doesn't want us to worship the Lord. He wants us to, to, to focus on our situation and our circumstances. And in one sense, we are worshiping when we do that. We're just focusing it in the wrong direction. We're focusing in worry. So we're um, actually, <laughs> you know, doing it the opposite way. So when we're praising God for his greatness, for um, his goodness, and that His today his mercy endured forever, he gives brand new mercies on today. If you blew it yesterday, when you confess your sin, he faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Amen. Glory to God. As we discipline ourselves in our prayers, and, and, and he says the effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much. And as we develop soul friendships, we'll have prayerful conversations with other spiritual, divine connected people that we're going to be, um, God is going to help us um, develop some um, more strategic small groups in this next season. 
giving us more spiritual direction, helping us have some mentoring relationships. And so I invite you to um, a personal reflection over the next couple of weeks um, before we embark on 2019, that you begin to pay attention to your inner self um, to in order that you're going to grow in, in your love for God and your love for others and your love for yourself and that you will begin to practice di disciplines of being of service, um, being hum humbly serving God and, and out of an overflow of his love and his compassion to others as the, as the Lord uh, continues to heal the soulish area, the bondages of, of your soul as you allow the, the Holy Spirit um, to govern your life. Amen. Glory to God. And I'm going to share just um, a couple of final things and then I'll bring um, the broadcast to a close. Um, I have to go back to work in about 20 minutes. And so what I wanted to talk about is your soul, soul development and how this is so important in um, moving with these strategies. Now, you're going to be developing as, as um, developing out of a personal consciousness into a spiritual consciousness. Because remember that when Adam failed, and Adam and Eve failed, it brought about self-consciousness and it moved them from um, God consciousness to self-consciousness. And this is where the pain, where our pain and our grief is. When we're focusing on our self-consciousness, everything that has to do with the self keeps us in this place of bondage to fear. Amen. Glory to God. When when the when 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 mankind fell, it brought us into this pe place of dualistic thinking. It brought us into this place of plurality. When we have pluralistic thinking and we have this duality, your focus on good and evil, it makes you the soulless realm be bipolar in one sense because you're you're moving from one pole to the other, and this affects your mental and your emotional health. Now the Lord wants us to have so judgment he was, wants us to walk circumspectly and so when when we're um, have as a soul prosperity coach I'm here to coach you into soul development to move you from this place of personal um, self-consciousness to a spiritual consciousness to God consciousness this training and development is helping you go deeper so that you can engage your your mental faculties and, and the way that you um, develop mastery is through your words that you speak. You are a speaking spirit. You are, remember that you are a spirit, that you have a soul and you live in a body. And so as you train your mouth gate to begin to speak with in divine alignment with the word of God, you begin to, the words that you speak quicken that treasure that's within your inner vessel. Remember that the Lord said that the kingdom of heaven is not an observance, it's inside of you. And so this treasure that's in you needs to come out of you. And how it comes out is through the spoken word. When we we are speaking spirits just like God, he said, let there be light and there was light. And so the Lord has been bringing um, conviction about the words that we've been speaking that have been out of alignment. See, the enemy, his job is to provoke you to speak not the truth. He is the father of lies. And so we have to be baptized again in grace and truth. And the truth will set us free. We have to walk in the biblical um, word of God to, to experience the Lord at the fullest capacity. And so when you begin to train your mouth gate to speak what's in alignment of what's in uh, what's in alignment with the word of God, you're going to do, do great exploits for the Lord. And so when you're receiving truth, you're, you're, you develop a different level of consciousness, right? And you begin to experience in a spiritual awakening and you move into what we call the regeneration self. You're no longer walking in that place of of the old wretched man. You you begin to move at a higher level even in your subconscious mind through Christ Jesus mind. The superconscious mind begins to take precedence over that lower nature. When you begin to walk in aspects of your divine nature, you begin to have these attributes of being made in the image and likeness of God that you begin to 
um, experience having divine ideas, you begin to see yourself that Christ is perfection within you, that you are, 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 are perfected in him by his love. So when you begin to develop in this way, you're going to be expressing the divine nature um, as you become into a fuller um, realization of your true identity in Christ Jesus, you will begin to fully demonstrate your divine potential. And that's the purpose of the, the Faith Formation Training and Development Institute. At some point, I'm praying it's going to be a university. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the Lord, he, he, he shows us, gives us these strategies so we know that we have different functions of our soul and we have these different levels of consciousness. I talked about it before that we have have you either you have like four levels of consciousness either you're in that lower level which is victim consciousness when you feel victimized and you feel that some everybody is doing something to you right you don't feel responsible you feel that it's somebody else's fault that that means that you're going to be in a place of stagnation that you're going to be in a place of immobility it immobilizes you in if when you're in that place you can't get into your creative energy field if you're in that place so you got to move out of that place quickly when you catch yourself there when you're cognizant of what you're doing when you're cognizant of the thoughts the victim type of thoughts and the victim kind of um, speaking when you find yourself looking at other people and blaming them, that you know you're in victim consciousness. When you move out of that place of victim consciousness, you move into victorious consciousness. You be, you be, begin to um, be um, recognized and be cognizant of um of, of your resiliency, of the things that you um, made it through and all the strength that you had, the fortitude, you begin to be able to do an assessment of your strengths, not just your weakness. You're able to look at yourself in a, in, a, in a right way. You can look at your character defects and shortcomings, but you can also see the areas where you've made improvement, the, way, the ways that you've made progress. So we got to look at both realms so we can get better. Amen. Glory to God. So if you focus only on your deficit, it's, you're going to feel constantly condemned and you're going to constantly feel ashamed because you're not looking at yourself through the lens of God. You have to constantly see that he's a progressive God. He's calling you to, to be better. Every day you're getting better and you have to decree and declare that, that I'm on a potter's wheel and that he's not finished with me yet. So after you move into this victorious con consciousness, you move into victorious, con no, no vessel consciousness. And when you're a vessel, you, you're, more usable by God. You can begin to be a channel of his peace, of his grace, of his righteousness, of his goodness, of his mercy, of his love, of his forgiveness. You you bring in everything that you want. You bring into the table. I am love. I am forgiveness. I am grace. I am abundance. You begin to see yourself through the lens of the Lord. You begin to see that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am an overcomer. I am a new creation. I begin to move my life forward. I'm not um, um, fixated on the past. I'm moving my life forward. That's what the Lord wants us to do in this next season. And so as you begin to move in this place, you're going to have more energy. You're going to feel synergized. And so utilize the spiritual disciplines and the tools that I'm sharing with you today in your prayer time, in your meditation, and in your, your time of self-reflection and self-observance so that you can begin to know what thoughts are going through your mind. Hallelujah, glory to God. So when you begin to move in this place where your faith is being built up, you're going to perceive the power of your mind and link it with the power to shape substance. Remember that it is a spiritual assurance. The faith is assurance of things hope, hope for, the evidence of things not seen. It, it means that God is giving you the power to do the seemingly impossible. He's giving you to this place of moving into the supernatural. It is a force that draws to you your heart's desire out of, out of this place of resting in the Lord, of having this assurance in the Lord. Glory to God. I just have a few more points that I want to make. The Lord, again, is helping us move in this place of a deeper knowing, a deeper inner knowing that 
um, which we're seeking after is already ours, that is all ours for the taking, that we're moving from the finished works of Jesus Christ, that the things that we're hoping for, that they're already in the invisible realm, but we're going to bring them, manifest them here into um, the visible realm. So faith, again, is the quality in us which enables us to look past the appearance of things we look past the appearance of lack. I want you to look past the appearance of limitation and look past your difficulties and begin to take a hold of the divine mind of God, the divine ideals of God, and begin to believe them, even though you might not see any evidence yet in the natural. So I invite you to move out of your carnal nature and out of your carnal mind and to begin to move into your spiritual nature and your spiritual mind, your divine nature. So when you begin to do that, when God gives you an illogical instruction, you will just simply say, yes, Lord, I will obey. Be it unto me as you say in your word. You won't analyze it out until you begin to have paralysis. You will begin to just be quick to hear. You will be slow to speak and you'll be slow to wrath, right? And so when you begin to do this, you through faith, we know with an inner knowing the truth that has not yet expressed itself or manifest in our world. So remember that you are a visible representation of the invisible king, that we're moving from the finished works of Jesus Christ. Christ came to destroy the works of the devil and God said it is finished. So faith is more than your belief. It is, is the very substance of that which is believed. Faith is working in spiritual substance, accomplishing all things. When, when your faith is being exercised, you're moving into this deeper place in the Lord of deeper spirituality, of deeper spiritual consciousness. And God begins to find a, a place of rest in you. You could be a habitation for the spirit of God to dwell in. When you develop this spiritual consciousness or this spiritual awakening, you begin to um, know that you're working in the divine um, law of variation. It brings results that seem miraculous, right? So you receive power, the power of faith. It is our ability to perceive the reality of divine, of the divine mind of the kingdom of God, despite the evidence to the contrary. So you endure contradictions oftentimes when you're walking in this place. So faith in the absolute realm means the ability to believe, to perceive, um, to have this conviction, to hear. Um, and, and so we're going to be reviewing some concepts such as self um, sense consciousness, error thoughts, feelings, and your higher consciousness, the ability to believe and to perceive the reality of some things, of divine ideas, divine truths and principles and laws. And so we only have a few more minutes left on the broadcast, so I'm excited about coming to you again to bring more of this information to you. If this information is helpful to you, I would like your feedback and to understand what areas spoke to you, what areas resonated with you, and what areas that you're struggling with or need more clarity or you would like more mastery in that area things that you're looking for that you would like um, deeper teachings on, I would like you to give feedback in re regard regarding that. And um, also, if you have been blessed by the ministry, I invite you to invest in the word of God that you receive. If this word is bringing transformation to your life and, and, and the teachings are blessing you, this is good ground to sow in. And so, so many people are lusters and they just only take and they don't give back. So I'm inviting you to sow into the, the, the uh, ministry to bring give a donation. And you can download the cash app and you could just enter the dollar sign and spell out my name. It's spelled L-A-R-H-O-N-D-A-B-R-A-D-L-E-Y and it's all in caps. And so that's just something that I wanted to invite you to do. I want to give you a few affirmations and a few quick um, nuggets before I um, close the broadcast. One affirmation you could begin to decree is that I claim my power of faith. I perceive 
and I'm, I perceive and, and I, I, ha I have spiritual access to the divine mind of God. So I want you to decree that. And the Lord is helping you as you develop your spiritual muscles and you develop yourself in this place of mastery over your mental faculties. The Lord is going to give you strength stability and steadfastness when you're moving in this place of being strengthened in the lord and the power of his might god gives you enduring power this gives you a energy and you can move in a synergistic way this gives you freedom from all your weaknesses and your proclivities where god is bringing you to this place of stability of character in this next season of giving you power to withstand temptation and giving you the capacity to accomplish some things that you couldn't do before Remember that he said he's giving you the power to get wealth, to perform his covenant in the earth realm. That means he's giving you the capacity. He's giving you the ability. He's giving you the proficiency to be able to accomplish it because you have to, when you believe that he's with you and for you and that he's strengthening you, strengthening you when you take these steps of faith, you know that as you, every step that you take in that God is with you. That's how you empower. That's how you move it in this confidence. Your confidence in the Father dwelling in you doing the work, your confidence in the anointing that's in you. The anointing that's in you destroys every yoke of bondage and looses every band of wickedness. Christ is in you, the hope of glory. He gives you hope. Amen. Glory to God. In the midst of hopelessness, in the midst of things looking barren, things looking um contrary the lord is working things out he's strengthening you he's giving you enduring power amen and so not only did he, is he strengthen you physically in this season he's strengthening you mentally and and spiritually and so we have to be proactive in healing our mind we have to be uh, proactive in healing the parts of our soul that have been damaged the soulish realm the part of us that have had um damaged emotions that have been extremely hurt in this last season and extremely um, dejected, rejected, ostracized, um, devalued, um, depreciated, right? So God says that you, he allowed all these things to happen so that you can see your true value and your true worth, that you have inner value, you have inner worth, you have inherent worth. He says, you're accepted by me. I accept you. You're accepted in the beloved. You are complete in Christ Jesus. You are good enough. You're very good. You're fearfully and wonderfully man you're the workmanship of my hands you know what I mean that you are all that you need to be he says I am I am so you are so you have to begin to decree that I am so all the strength that you need is originated in the spirit when you move in the spirit and be led by the spirit and allow God to give you a, a new baptism we need now faith we need a spiritual awakening on a daily basis we need God to quicken us again and that's my prayer for you today that God will quicken you by his spirit and so as um, all our strength that we're getting, hallelujah, glory to God, it originates in the spirit and the thought and the word spiritually expressed bring manifestation. So this is a strategy that God has given you. Your thoughts and your words will bring your spiritual manifestation. So we are embarking on managing our mind, managing our emotions, and pulling down the strongholds on our mind. Those thoughts that exalted itself against the knowledge of God's will and guarding our gate in this next season so we can experience success. Oh, bless God. So we're going to, I have so much to give you. I have so many copious notes here. And I just wanted to wet your whistle a little bit, get you excited for the next teachings that are going to come about. I think I wanted to give you those last two scriptures. I didn't even um, read them to you before I, I close out, if I could find them. <laughs> um, I think one of them is 1 Timothy 4 and 7. And it says, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. And the final scripture, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, all scriptures is breathed out by God or God breathed and they're profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness or instruction in righteousness, that the people of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So I pray that this training has um, brought you into another level of, of training in righteousness, 
of helping you see that you're complete in Christ Jesus. The Lord wants you to be equipped. He wants the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened. He, he wants you to know that he's giving you everything pertaining to life and godliness. He wants you to know that he's put a treasure in your earthen vessel. He wants you to know that he's anointed you to be a speaking spirit just like God, that you are God in the earth. You a little G, hallelujah, representing the big G. Hallelujah, glory to God. He wants you to know that the good work of pursuing the purpose of godliness, the, the good work of, of growing in your Christ-likeness, to Christ be formed in you. Amen. Glory to God. Continue to stay on the potter's wheel. Continue to submit to the Lord. Submit to the Holy Ghost. He says, re resist the devil and he will flee, but submit to the Lord. Allow the Holy Spirit to govern your life in this season. Allow him to give you instructions on what areas you need to walk in these spiritual disciplines. As you begin to do this, I promise you that it's going to promote your spiritual growth and your development as, as we begin to develop healthier habits in this next season, we're going to experience both personal and interpersonal disciplines. We're going to develop balance, balance in our humanity and our divinity. We're going to begin to engage others in the practice of spiritual disciplines as we become more spiritual discipline ourselves. Remember that dis disciplines are practices. That means that you have to have some wisdom, some practicality. That means that wisdom, you're going to have corresponding action because your faith is going to move you to something. It's going to quicken you so that we, we're we going to move in these activities in practical ways. But the goal and the purpose of it is for us to practice becoming a disciple. It is not so much about doing doing it's not about that it's about leading out of your being it's about being like Jesus Christ it's about being motivated by his love for us it's about being motivated by the Bible by the biblical record by the spiritual disciplines amen glory to God so we bless God for this time of self-reflection of, of a time of moving in this place where the Lord is going to help us to walk in more of the, our power to be empowered Hallelujah. Nobody can disempower us unless we allow them to. We have power over our faculties of our mind. We have we have power over our emotions. Amen. The enemy might make you think that you don't have power to to manage those emotions and man manage the thoughts. But we do. We have the power to do that. And, and sometimes we fall short, but as soon as you're cognizant of it, just get back up again. Amen. And God is going to strengthen you. So I have so much I want to give you, but I know that his time is well spent. And I appreciate you joining the broadcast again. Again, I invite you to sow a seed in this good, good, fertile ground. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Be a blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord God, I just pray, Lord God, for your people, Father. I pray, Lord God, that you continue continue to strengthen your people, Lord God, that you continue to, Lord God, anoint them afresh, oh God, with fresh oil, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you give us a fresh anointing to be able to be governed by the Holy Spirit, Father, as you give us strategies and, and you give us, Lord God, a mind, the mind of Christ, oh God, that we can keep our mind stayed on you, to stay in perfect peace. In the name of Jesus, I, I pray that the eyes of you, the understanding, your understanding be enlightened, that you know that you've been given every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. I pray that the Lord give you an understanding heart to do his will, that he will give you greater insight and wisdom and understanding and the knowledge that the spirit of wisdom and understanding and knowledge will rest upon you, that the, the spirit of reverential fear will rest upon you, that the Lord will bring correction and, and conviction and he will give instruction and in righteousness. I pray in the name of Jesus that God strengthen you to read your word more, to, to develop your prayer life, to begin to meditate on the word of God, to begin to worship the Lord and be intimate with him at another level in this next season that we can partner together to, to, to grow our greatness together and see the manifestation of the goodness of God. Lord God, you're faithful, you're reliable, you're dependable, Father. Lord God, you're you're perfect in all your ways. You're perfecting everything that concerneth your people. Lord God, we thank you that we're on a part of will, that we're being marred in your hand, made anew. We thank you that we're new creations in you, that old things have passed, all things have become new. We thank you, Lord God, that you're healing our mental and our emotional health. 
that we are God, that you're healing all our manner of illness, sickness, and disease, that we're your beloved, that we're in health even as our soul prospers in the name of Jesus, oh God, that we, Lord God, are accepted in the beloved Father, that we love and accept ourselves, oh God, that you're teaching us, oh God, how to love ourselves so we can love our neighbors as we love ourselves, Lord God, as we're moving in a greater level of God esteem and God sufficiency, Father, as we're relinquishing culture the Baha, as we're relinquishing control in the name of Jesus, oh God, that we're being led by the spirit of law, of, of the Lord, that we're pulling down carnal thoughts, we're, we're moving in our divine nature, we're moving by the divine power of the living God, we're walking worthy of the vacation you called us in the name of Jesus, oh God, so I pray that you continue to strengthen your people, that you keep, help them um, um, build up on a most holy faith, oh God, you've given each of them a measure of faith, and you're anointing them afresh to develop that faith, oh God, to take a proactive role in developing their self, to develop spiritual muscles, to begin to move by the spirit of the living God. I pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that the, that you begin to give them revelatory knowledge in the name of Jesus, oh God, that the blessings of the Lord will overtake them, Father. I decree and declare a 24-hour breakthrough in the name of Jesus, that God is going to do a suddenly in your life. He's going to do a turnaround in the name of Jesus. You continue to walk in repentance. Repentance means that God wants you to move in this place of a change of mind, change your view, change your thoughts, heartily amend your ways in the name of Jesus, that the Lord is going to give us strategies on how to get out of debt. He's going to give us strategies on how to how to pay some things off and how to save and how to move by the spirit of God, how to develop a deeper character. He's, de he's developing our character in this season. He's preparing us for a great blessing. He says that he's our exceeding just reward. He's our inheritance. Amen. And you are his heritage and it, it, he's restoring the fortunes of his people those that are coming to him look, repentant and humble and penitent before the Lord uh, surrendering and yielding to him giving him everything giving him another yes in the season God is going to do the miraculous he's going to do a suddenly he's going to do a turnaround just hold on be encouraged he says don't be weary and well doing hallelujah he, he said in your weakness his strength is being made perfect in the name of Jesus and more is being being revealed. Amen. Glory to God. Remember as a king, you got to speak the word of God. Hallelujah. A king speaks with power and authority. Amen. Glory to God. I pray that the, the prophet, priest, and king in you begin to arise as you begin to proclaim the word of God, as you begin to, to, to um, develop your prayer mantle, your prayer life, your intercessory life, as it begin to go to the next level in this season, as we begin to encourage one another, edify each other, hallelujah, coming into the unity of the faith, amen, glory to God, so I thank God for you, and I bless God for your life, and I pray that this broadcast has been a blessing to you, and I greet you again with Jesus' joy, have a blessed, blessed, blessed afternoon, and drop me a line, again, give me some feedback, let me know how this broadcast has blessed you, please share the broadcast, hallelujah, thank you, and be blessed, this is Apostle LaRonda Brad signing off. Until next time, I love you all. Blessings.